Hello, brothers and sisters. I've been rewriting, actually a whole new book, rewriting The Crisis of Truth that I did many years ago. The title of the new book is called A Church in Crisis, Pathways Forward. But while I was doing research for the book, I came across a prophecy that Father Michael Scanlon, at that time president of Franciscan University, gave in 1976. It was the uh, bicentennial of the United States, and uh, he was speaking at a big conference. And he gave a very, very strong prophecy. The year before, in 1975, was the first big international Rome conference, and 10,000 people were there in St. Peter's Basilica for the closing mass. And very strong prophecy, several prophecies were given at that time that spoke of a time coming where the structures that would be there wouldn't be there anymore, and the Lord was going to be using this time to draw us into a deeper union with himself. So I'm going to read you Father Scanlon's prophecy, and then I'm going to kind of go back over it and comment on it, because I think it's pretty significant and, and amazingly resonant with what we've just been experiencing with the whole lockdown, shutdown, uh, not being able to go to churches and economic kind of difficulties. So let, let's listen to this. Son of man, do you see that city going bankrupt? Are you willing to see all your cities going bankrupt? Are you willing to see the bankruptcy of the whole economic system you rely on now so that all money is worthless and cannot support you? I, I want to say here, you know, some of this could be a little scary. Don't, don't get scared. Don't, don't, don't stop watching. It, it's going to lead to tremendous love and tremendous hope. So kind of just stick with me as we kind of work through this. Son of man, do you see the crime and lawlessness in your city, streets, and towns and institutions? Are you willing to see no law, no order, no protection for you, except that which I myself will give you? Son of man, do you see the country which you love and which you are now celebrating? This was the bicentennial of the United States. It was the 200th anniversary of our founding as a country when he was giving this prophecy. Are you willing to see no country, no country to call your own, except those I give you as my body? Will you let me bring you life in my body on only there? Son of man, do you see those churches which you can go to so easily now? Are you ready to see them with bars across their doors, with doors nailed shut? Are you ready to base your life only on me and not in any particular structure? Are you ready to depend only on me and not on all the institutions of schools and parishes that you are working so hard to foster? Son of man, I call you to be ready for that. For that is what I am telling you about. The structures are falling and changing. It is not for you to know the details now, but do not rely on them as you have been. I want you to make a deeper commitment to one another. I want you to trust one another to build an inter interdependence that is based on my spirit. It is an interdependence that is no luxury. It is absolute necessity for those who will base their lives on me and not the structures from a pagan world. I have spoken, and it will take place. My word will go forth to my people. They may hear and they may not, and I will respond accordingly. But this is my word. Look about you, son of man, when you see it all shut down, when you see everything removed which has been taken for granted, and when you are prepared to live without these things, then you will know what I am making ready. This is, uh, when I read this, I was kind of almost breathless, like, whoa. There's things that are happening today that weren't happening 44 years ago that are a partial fulfillment, at least, of this prophecy. And there's wisdom here for us. There's a warning here for us. There's instruction here for us that's very relevant. So let's go over it. I'll make a little comment on it. Son of man, do you see that city going bankrupt? Are you willing to see all your cities going bankrupt? Are you willing to see the bankruptcy of the whole economic system you rely on now? So that all money is worthless and cannot support you. You know, when when the coronavirus really first hit and the stock market fell and 
tens of millions of people in the United States and all over the world lost their jobs and had their salaries reduced or got laid off. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a gut check time. What, what are we relying on? Where, where's our trust? And I actually did some videos here on our YouTube channel uh, talking about the anxiety we have about, about money, the anxiety and fear we have about our economic well-being, the anxiety and fear we also have about our health, and uh, trying to kind of get us recentered on the promises of the Lord and, and to kind of do a little, a little heart check. You know, Jesus says, you know, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And I gave some practical wisdom from St. Francis de Sales about how to do that heart check and how to see where our heart is and how to handle our anxiety and fear concerning money and the tremendous, wonderful promises of Jesus to provide for us if we seek first his kingdom. Let's go on. Are you willing to see the crime? Son of man, do you see the crime and lawlessness in your city streets and towns? Just last night in the news, I was watching riots in a particular town, city in our country. Are you willing to see no law, no order, no protection for you except that which I myself will give you? Here, here's the key. The world's going to be shaken. The church is going to be shaken. Uh, whatever shaken can be shaken will be shaken, says the book of Hebrews. But here, here's the key. Are you willing for that to leave and to fall except that which I myself will give you, the protection which I myself will give you. The Lord wants us to come to him with complete confidence, with complete trust, that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his holiness, that all these other things will be provided as well. Not only the food and drink and shelter and clothing we need to pr preserve life in this world, but the protection we need in the midst of chaos and the breakdown of law and order. Son of man, do you see the country which you love and which you are now celebrating? A country's history that you look back on with nostalgia? Are you willing to see no country? No country to call your own except those I give you as my body? I, I, know, I know a lot of us are really concerned about what's happening in our country. I'm talking about the United States, but also Canada and many other countries around the world, Western Europe. There, there's a, an aggressive secularism. That, that wants to stamp out Judeo-Christian values, that's hostile to Christ and the church, that, that wants to punish us, that wants to arrest us, that wants to remove us from social media. Uh, if we say things that displeasing to the global elite, that wants to impose a, a control on the world and a censorship on the world where they don't want the word of God to be spoken anymore. And brothers and sisters, we need to speak it, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. We need the courage of the Lord. We need the fortitude of the Lord. We need the Holy Spirit to give us that courage and that fortitude. We need to be in that right relationship with him right now. Will, Are you willing to see no country, no country to call your own except those I give you as my body? This is, this is the Bible. Jesus says we have no dwelling place here below. We have no lasting city here below. The apostles say it. We have no city here below. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. We have no lasting city here below. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. Our, our, our city is the new Jerusalem that already is being formed in the body of Christ and it's going to come down on the last day. Brothers and sisters, we need to know that our primary loyalty, our primary family are our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is really so important. Will you let me bring you life in my body and only there? We need to be looking to the body of Christ in the Eucharist, but we also be, need to be looking to the body of Christ in one another and in ourselves. You know, one of the things that not being able to go to the Eucharist for so many months really created in us, and, and our pastor at, at Christ the King Parish in Ann Arbor said it many times when we were doing the online masses, he said, Vatican II talks about four ways in which Christ is present uh, to his people. One is in a very special way in the Eucharist. Another one is in the person of the priest. Another one, though, is in the Word of God. And another one is in our bodies, who are the body of Christ. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, we're one body, one spirit with Jesus. We're members of one another. When Paul was uh, converted on the road to uh, Damascus, uh, the voice that spoke to him from heaven said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul was persecuting Christians. 
Saul was persecuting the body of Christ. Jesus identifies himself with us, and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are dwelling in us, and we need to treasure that and value that. And if sometime we're cut off from the Eucharist again, if sometime we're cut off from the churches again, the physical churches, we need to remember that he's with us, and he's with us in a very strong way in his word, in one another, and in the indwelling Trinity in our souls. Son of man, do you see those churches which you can go to so easily now? Are you ready to see them with bars across their doors, with doors nailed shut? Are, are you ready to base your life only on me and not on any particular structure? We love our churches. We love the buildings. Some of us, for many generations, have had families go to particular churches. But all across the developed countries, churches are closing. Buildings are being sold off. Schools are closing. Thank God for the churches and for the schools that are still open. But many people now can't afford to go to Catholic schools. We, we need to be prepared for a time when we don't have as many schools as we have now. We have far fewer than we used to have. And we don't have as many church buildings as we used to have. We have far fewer than we used to have. We need to be ready for that time, which is coming. Whether it comes through disaster or not, it's just coming by, by what's happening in the world and what's happening in the church. It's coming. We need to recenter our life on the Lord himself who's with us every day and not be so dependent on a building. Be so grateful when the buildings are still there. Be so grateful when we can still go to the Eucharist, which is so special. But we need to not forget that the body of Christ is not limited to the sacrament. The body of Christ is also our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Are you ready to base your life only on me and not on any particular structure? Are you ready to depend only on me and not on all the institutions of schools and parishes that you're working so hard to foster? Son of man, I call you to be ready for that. And brothers and sisters, We've been given an opportunity to get ready for that. We've been given a little maybe warning here in, in the closing of the churches just recently and, and, the, and the economic turndown just even for a short time. A little, little warning shot across our bow, so to speak, that get ready. The structures of the world aren't stable. This is what I am telling you about, to be ready for that. The structures are falling and changing. It's not for you to know the details now. But do not rely on them as you have been. I want you to make a deeper commitment to one another. We need to meet our fellow Christians in our neighborhoods. We need to meet our fellow Christians in our work environments. We need to start relating together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to have little house churches like, like the Catholic Church had in the beginning. All the Catholic Church had for the first 300 years were house churches. Brothers and sisters gathering in small groups and homes. That's what the church was until the persecution was lifted. Brothers and sisters, we have to start to build those house churches again. We have to start building those neighborhood relationships. We have to start knowing who our brothers and sisters in Jesus are to be ready for a time when we can't gather in any other way. I want you to trust one another to build an interdependence that's based on my spirit. It's an interdependence that's no luxury. This isn't an option. If we're going to survive the coming onslaught, the secularization that's trying to shut down Christ in our culture, that's coming against the church, that's coming against Christians, that's coming against the Word of God, this is not a luxury to be in relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ. This is not a luxury. As Jesus says here, it's a necessity. I have spoken and it will take place. My word will go forth to my people. They may hear and they may not. And I will respond accordingly. But this is my word. This is what Jesus says in Scripture. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away until every bit of it be fulfilled. Look about you, son of man, when you see it all shut down. When you see everything removed which has been taken for granted. And when you are prepared to live without these things, then you will know what I am making ready. We've just seen it all shut down. It's almost like the Lord was saying, there's going to come a sign. You're going to be given a sign. That sign didn't happen for 44 years, but it's just happened. 
when you see it all shut down, when you see everything removed which has been taken for granted, and when you are prepared to live without these things, when you have gotten ready, when you've responded to the warning by, by putting Jesus first in your life and seeking out your brothers and sisters in Christ and starting to get real in our relationships with each other, then you will know what I am making ready. Everything is spoken about here is because of God's love. What is it going to take to wake up souls? What is it going to take to wake us up and shake us out of our complacency, shake us out of our lukewarmness, shake us out of our indifference to the things of God, shake us out of our worldliness and recenter our lives on Jesus and, and get into relationship with one another and be willing to be his witnesses in a hostile environment? What is it going to take? The Lord's going to do what he needs to do to wake as many of us up as possible. And some will pay attention, some will listen, some will awaken, some will get ready, and some won't. And there'll be very different outcomes depending on how we respond to God's word or not. Just not in this prophecy, but in his scripture. This prophecy is bringing to the present, bringing right now a warning that's right there in the scripture all the time. Jesus says, you know, when, when the master comes, don't be asleep. You know, when, you know, don't be, don't be asleep when the master comes, you know, uh, don't tell, tell me, Lord, Lord, because it isn't everybody who says, Lord, Lord, is going to get into the kingdom of God. It's going to be only those who do the will of God. Uh, the door is going to shut at a certain time. The door of grace and mercy is going to shut when the Lord returns. And those who have responded to grace and mercy are going to be welcomed into the father's kingdom. Those who have not paid attention to prophetic warnings, not paying attention to prophetic signs, are going to be left outside. There's going to be warning, mourning, weeping, gnashing of teeth. The door is going to close. Get ready. I believe the Lord is showing mercy to us in this prophecy from Father Michael Scanlon. I think it's a prophecy that's starting to be fulfilled in our time. We need to take it seriously. We need not to live in fear, not to live in anxiety, but to live in the freedom of the glorious freedom of the sons and daughters of God who know that the Father loves them, who know that the Father has providential care for them and will never let anything happen to us that he doesn't have a way to bring good out of and he doesn't protect us in the middle of. So brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm excited by this word. I think it's a, a word for today, a word for us now. Uh, it, it's time to wake up. It's nothing different than what Jesus and the apostles have been saying for 2,000 years. It's time to wake up. It's time to get with each other. It's time to not depend on external things, but depend on the Lord himself. Lord, we thank you that the gift of prophecy is alive and working in the church today. We thank you for Father Michael Scanlon. We thank you for us being able to talk about these things together and encourage and build one another up. Amen. I'd also like to tell you that the full text of Father Scanlon's prophecy will be available on our website along with my commentary in written form in case you'd like to share it that way with people. I think this is something that can help wake people up and I hope you found it both sobering, challenging, but also encouraging and useful. And if you go to our website, www.renewalministries.net. God bless you, dear brothers and sisters. Music